so much. Well, I just want to thank everybody for being here today uh, from the Floyd family. This is a very interesting way to get to know a family member. Uh, and the first person to recognize or to point out, well, Q, is this your family? Was my mother-in-law. And um, a bit of research. <laughs> and it is, so uh, what do you do? I don't want to have with them. I have a Chinese daughter, a Puerto Rican son, a Puerto Rican daughter, a white daughter. Last name Floyd. When I say George, you say Floyd. George! Floyd! George! Floyd! And that's all it takes is unity. We just unified in three seconds over a name. And you want to take eight minutes and 46 seconds for someone's life and end it for generations to come. Ugh. I'm mad. I'm mad. I'm sad. I'm so transparent right now. I've been in this community for two years, two years. Everybody calls me Q, everyone calls me Q. But Floyd is tattooed on my skin. The, state, the name means something. It could be any man on that ground. I was a cop for over 10 years. I never would do that to anybody. I'm a cop. I have a white daughter. It makes no sense. I'm fed up. I'm mad as hell. Anger is an emotion you have to give credit to. That's like unification, energy, and happiness. No more. I will not take it. So I'll be the voice for the Floyd family. And you guys be the voice for your family. Because it's unified. One family under God and nothing else matters. Yeah. Next I'm going to introduce to you James Joyce. He's going to go over the call of action. Yes, Ventura County. It's time. It's about damn time. From the county that is at the seat of the controversial Rodney King trial, and from the great nation that was built on the backs of my damn ancestors, it is got damn time. It's an honor and a privilege to be here before you today. My name is James Joyce III, and for nearly the last th eight years, I've served as the district director for our state senator, Hannah Beth Jackson, who is here with us in spirit and is probably watching online somewhere, but she sends her deepest regards and solidarity of this movement. movement. As one of 120 legislators in California, and I won't say her age, uh, she has been taking social distancing quite seriously. In addition to trying to keep up with HBJ, four years ago, following law enforcement killings of Philando Castile and Alton Sterling, I launched an initiative called Coffee with the Black Guy. It's a facilitated community conversation about race and perspective. Simply put, coffee, connection, conversations. I've kind of seen it as an entry point for non-black folks to kind of enter their arc of racial understanding, as I like to call it. I feel that the platform that my team and I have worked to build over the last four years is ready-made for this moment and movement. And I'll get to more of that in just a second. You've heard from Sister Regina, and she laid out the blueprint, the roadmap, build community, get involved, forge meaningful relationships. Well, it's time. There is an urgency in this moment. And although over the past few weeks I've been quite blackishly skeptical of the newfound incredulousness of our condition, 
the black American condition. I mean, our culture is pop culture, and all you have to do is listen to, throw a dart at a hip hop song, world peace, talk about don't shoot, tell the police, uh. Scared, ain't none of them prepared, I could see. Who are you? Anderson Pack on his 2018 album entitled Oxnard. Elvis was a hero to most. Elvis was a hero to most. Elvis was a hero to most. But he never meant shit to me. You see, straight up racist that sucker was. Simple and plain. There's kids in the crowd, so I won't say what's actually in there. Uh, him and John Wayne. You can figure it out, y'all smart. Cause I'm black, and I'm proud, and I'm ready, and I'm hyped. Plus I'm amped. Most of my heroes don't appear on stamps. Sample a look back. You look and find nothing but rednecks for 400 years if you check. Don't forget to, don't worry, be happy. Was the number one jam? Damn, if I say it, you can slap me right here. Fight the power. Our Ventura brother, Chuck D, a public enemy, 1988, entitled, It Takes a Nation of Millions to Hold Us Back. And we persist. These two specifically curated snapshots into the black American experience were penned and put into the world 30 years apart from one another. And the only thing that has changed about this experience is the advancement in technology that those artists used, those artists with local ties to Ventura County, used to produce their pieces of art. It is time. So how do we move forward to build community get involved, and forge meaningful relationships? Well, there are several ways that you just heard today, and a lot of folks have articulated some things that you, some steps that you could take to make our communities better. And in this urgency of now, I feel all the pain and pummelings of my ancestors, all the snide remarks unchecked and tears wept add up to be useful for this moment. Turning pain into passion. Pain into passion. Listen to that. We're still doing it. The economic prowess of this nation in global markets. The reason we can tell California is having the fifth largest economy in the world. Well, that was before COVID-19. We'll see how that works out. But the reason we are here, we are American. America has been built on the backs of our enslaved ancestors. For free, I remind you. And all we black people, in return for an apology from Congress, in return for an apology from Congress, on behalf of the people of the United States for the wrong committed against them and their ancestors who suffered under slavery and Jim Crow. House Resolution 194, passed by the 110th Congress, July 29th, 2008. You see, this is why we need ethnic studies curricula. It's important. So all of you out there who are new to the game, welcome. Welcome to your continuum of racial understanding. And I can assure you, Coffee with the Black Guy, the social innovation that I envisioned more than four years ago and incubated all my life, we are ready. In addition to the suggestions that you've heard here today, you'll be able to join online this Saturday at 11 a.m. on LinkedIn Live, or you can go to the CWABG, Coffee with the Black Guy, YouTube channel. You can find that and more at CWABG.com. On Saturday, unlike today, I, I will not have my words written down. My script, no script, just town hall style conversation, Q&A, genuine community building. Questions can be submitted prior to via the webpage or well, 
We'll be trying to field some of the questions live as they come in too. That's uh, why it takes a team to do this stuff. Um, but look, don't get me wrong. I do not profess to have all the answers. Hell, I don't profess to have any answers. Nor do I speak for the experience of all black people. If you have not figured it out by now, we are not a monolith. But I believe, and I have the endorsement of your local NACP chapter, but I believe that if we do not at least start the conversation, we are doomed from there on. So I offer to share perspective, knowledge, experiences, because we are tired. And my brothers and sisters should not, nor should we feel obligated to continue to work for free by educating you, the non-black people, or those just walking into our system, systematic and often diabolical oppression. I do not make this offering out of obligation, but out of gratitude. Black folks, those of us who are willing, let's help them out. Hopefully for the benefit of us all. So tune in if you can, and if not live, you'll be able to go back and listen. Uh, I'll have it on the channel. From there, that may lead to reading suggestions, more engaging conversations among smaller groups of friends, those who are willing, or have a dinner invitation, who knows? Hey, my mom always said, closed mouth doesn't get fed. Well, the same goes for you in our current climate. Engage, let's build community, let's do better, let's be better. Be better if not only for ourselves, but put in the work now for future generations. That's why I do it. My black is beautiful, so are we. Ventura County, I share this message in love, Thank you so much, Ashe. Say his name. George Floyd. I don't hear you say his name. George, George Floyd. Floyd. Say his name. George, George Floyd. Floyd. For some of you that don't know me, my name is Regina Hatcher Crawford. I say that name proudly because I'm a third generation of civil rights leader. Woo! <laughs> Let him know. I am a mother. I am an aunt. And every time I stand here and I get a call at night, I cry. And I'm trying not to cry now, but I cry because I hate to hear the message on the other end of that phone. So I stand here as a mother, as an aunt, as a civil rights leader. Crying because I watched our children die sometimes in the street. So in saying that, I want to first acknowledge because of what we do in the NAACP, we build bridges, we build relationships. And part of why we're here today, I made a phone call to John Zaragoza and Mike Powers. And they said, Regina, what do you need? We're hurt. We're sorry for what we see on that television. Tell us what you need. So I'm first going to thank them for their support. I will be remiss by I'm not thanking my committee and my members. Because if Venture County, if you didn't know, we work. So I want to say this week we watched TV. I don't know about you, but I was horrified for what I see. We watch a man begging 16 times. I can't breathe. At one point, he asked for his mama. Can you imagine how every mother felt that this man asked for his mother while he was taking his last breath. What made this case so different than the Rodney King case is the fact that we watched him die. We watched a man being murdered on television. And so we watched as a nation how everyone
one became awake about something we always knew in our community. Yes. Our children are treated. Yes. How we pray every night when our child walks out that door that they return home. I'm talking to you in this passion because I heard, just as you heard, we're all angry. So when we think about the black experience, we think about the loneliness that we go through. We think about the survival of the black man. How many times did they take him away from our homes and put in prison? How many times at the age of seven, they're already systematically being put into the system? No, you didn't understand me. They give tests in the schools where they determine how many prisons are going to be built. They've already determined that one out of three black men will go to prison. So that's what I'm angry about. I'm talking about what I'm angry about, that as a people, we're angry. Yes. Yes. I think about black people in the early years. We were enslavement. We were enslaved. We enriched the economy of this country through the backs of our work. From riots to beating to lynching. You get mom, I said lynching. Hmm. My father told me of the stories of him in Birmingham, Alabama. And he would have to dress in his uniform, the United States uniform, so that he can drive back and forth be able to go because if he wasn't in his uniform probability he would have been hung and he watched men hang in the tree so when you hear this song strange fruit that's what they're talking about so after 400 years of suffering and racial injustice we today still suffer from the same systematic process of unequal justice under the law I'm going to repeat that again under the laws Hmm. Laws that were written for us, no, no, that were written not by us, but for us. Mm -hmm. Despite the systematic efforts, we still stand as a people. And we fight. I'm not going to date my age, and I wasn't born at the time. When I think about this moment, I think about a 14-year-old boy who simply, at this time we say simply, who whistled at a white woman. We all know how that story ended. Yes, we do. And years before that, my father, who was born in Birmingham, Alabama, talked about four innocent children who went to church that day. I'm going to say that again. Four innocent children who went to church that day in the church with bombs. They died because of hate, due to the skin, skin color, due to their skin color. And 30 years ago, 30 years ago, my father stood in front of Simi Valley Court. He was fighting for the Rodney King case. 30 years ago, and 30 years now, I'm standing here before you mm. to tell you about George Floyd. Mm-hmm. are torn apart. And I tell these stories because sometimes history repeats itself. You understand? History repeats itself. Mm -hmm. So, we share the commonalities today in each one of those stories I told you. This is like an Emmett Till moment. This is a Rodney King moment. So as we stand here today to mourn a man who is not here for his daughter, whose mother is here without a son, a community without a brother, I want you to understand that George Floyd's death was not in vain. We gotta understand the greater picture of why he died. Because of his death, he brought us here today.
say at this moment, at this time. What black and brown people are saying, black and brown and white are saying, enough is enough. See, many of you standing here in solidarity during the struggle of our pains and our victories gives our people hope that someday we will not be judged by the color of our skin. So, I want to talk specifically to the youth. I want you to know you are bearing the pains of our ancestors. And no one can ever understand your experience or your lives. These are just stories that you hear. They, these are stories that they just hear. But as we know, it's not in our history books. Only we know the experiences. I want you to know, we see you. We do see you. We hear you and we love you. And as we, as we go through the struggle, I want you to, and I'm kind of picking back and forth in my notes, but I want you to challenge the youth in this crowd to think about the aftermath. And I said the aftermath. Because we know that after the protests are over, this doesn't end. Mm, no, so it doesn't. I want you to think about that. I want you to change the narrative of our history by eliminating hate that's offensive in our country. Because our lives do matter. Black lives do matter. Yeah, yeah. So, in this challenge, I'm asking you, where do we go from here? It's simple. Three things. We build our community, mm -hmm. we get involved, and we forge meaningful relationships. Engage yourself beyond the barriers that hold us back. Exercise your rights and vote. Again, say his name. George Floyd! I didn't hear you. Say his name. George Floyd! Ventura, California. Say his name. George Floyd!